Good morning everyone, so today we're at a 2005 Skoda and it's the Octavia VR. This is a 1.8 turbo petrol and I'm sure the engine code is AUQ. So the guy's complaint with this is misfire and running lean. Now he's had it to lots of different garages, uh, the flung parts had to put a new O2 sensor in it, new coils. I believe other parts as well. New dipstick. So uh, we have two codes, cylinder one in misfire, and the other one was an O2 sensor fault. I'm sorry, I cleared the codes. <laughs> Stupid, I was just tired. Uh, <laughs> but I'll show you the data. So we just went into generic OBD because to get the other data running, oh, it's so slow. So set you up here and we'll go through it together. So you can hear the cars popping in the exhaust. So let's look at some of the figures. Uh, now we're connected because our voltage is up. Our airflow is at 8 grams, that could be perfectly normal. Calculated load value 3%, that was quite low. Commanded secondary off, distance travelled 0, that's because the codes were cleared by me. 67 degrees, engine RPM 800, equivalence 1.35, now if it's over one, it's lean, if it's under one, it's rich. So you can see we're lean, we're in closed loop. Uh, ignition timing, negative four. Oh, that'd be about, would that be about right? Yeah, I think so. Air intake 22 degrees, long term zero, malfunction off, EOBD. So look, oxygen sensor current, now it was complaining about this one, is 0 0.77, so if it's positive, that's adding fuel, negative is taking fuel away, so it is adding fuel. Downstream is 0 0.32. Uh, short term, there we go, pegged, plus 26%, so it's totally pegged, positive, so we're lean. So if I go and rev this car, you can watch these figures, and believe me, they do not come down, but we'll look at these two oxygen sensor figures as well. So actually you've seen that our fuel term, our fuel trims in, uh, improved when we took it off the idle, which it didn't do last time, believe me. So what I'm going to do is do a smoke test and see if we have an air leak. So we've got the old smoke test put up and I'm seeing smoke coming out. They bought me there, now is that normal? Don't know. The other thing I don't know is I went in through the air intake, it's where the mass air meter goes. So I don't, I've got my foot partially put down the pedal here. Plenty to come out there. So it seems to be that's the place, so. Is that drawing an unmetered air? Right at that very spot. Let's try some brake clean, see if it smooths out the revs. If I spray it in about that area. And it draws it in. Can't see nothing else. Go underneath. I can't see nothing else underneath here. There. Just seems to be that valve up the top. And that test again because I never had the throttle open. You can see it's open now. You've got to leave the ignition on with the with the ignition on with your foot and the pedal. So now we've got a stick on the pedal, and let's put the smoke we've got through the again. Throttle open here now, and I'm still putting smoke in, but you can see we're still getting it for that point, but I'm not sure if that's because it's a positive pressure. See, similar to a turbo, and also you can see it coming out the other one as well. I think this one's leaking as well, but as I say, could be because of positive pressure, no sure. I can't see any other. No, it's a smoke from here. I 
There used to be smoke coming from this side as well. Right, so we've tried spraying about here with brake clean, made no difference, but I've already sprayed some brake clean into this thing here. You can see an equivalence to the ratio. See, it lights up. And the engine smooths out. So it's a lack of fuel. So it's either an air leak or fuel pressure, maybe the pump. Don't know. Because if we then go back into our other data, funnily enough, that doesn't go into that again, ready to see if that moves up minus 20. Oh, it does. So you can see our short term did move and our milliamps come down. Can you see me move that in? See that sentence just stays the same, we did go a bit rich. So, blah, blah, blah. here do we go for here? So we've took off this valve here. And see this little notch there? Oops. The air leaks out that when you're pressurising it or even when you're drawing a vacuum. So, to me, that is not right. There must be a fault in that valve. That it would do that. I mean, you could see it having pressure relief capabilities, but no drawing in air. That would be, that'd be a pointless exercise. So we've got to see if we can bridge that valve out up the back there. Right. There's a big pipe there. So see if this improves idle quality. We tightened up this Jubilee clip on the bottom here. That's better. That's the only thing we can find so far. So we brought up all data. And this is quite a good wiring diagram. So the one we're looking at is number 11. That's the one that's leaking both ways. See that? My cursor. So if we come down number 11, is it says pressure control valve Oh, there it's there. Pressure control valve for crankcase ventilation. So that's what it says. That little chap is. And Roddy's marked it there. So there's no way that that should be leaking for air. Because it's not under any pressure. So even after, well, we've done a temporary fix on that PCV valve, this is still uh, lean, running rough. So you can see the code that we have pending. P0130, O2 sensor circuit bank 1, sensor 1. Now, that's been replaced. So I'm beginning to wonder if this is the computer that's up with this thing. Because that O2 sensor is working and it's feeding back. Because if we go back into live data, select all. We've got a We've got an open loop fault, uh, but I feel as well up. But if we take it up to 3000, let's take it up to 3000 RPM. The equivalence does get a bit better. Right, still not quite right, though. Still not quite right. So, clear. Clear that fault. Hmm. Read uh, clear fault codes. Yes. Uh, read fault codes. Generic. So there's nothing here at the moment. So let's start up, see how she idles. Ah, bad again. So read fault code. Generic. No fault code yet. So let's live data. Select all. So we're into fault already. So that fault code must have returned. So there it's right back. Clear default codes, so we've got zero at the moment. We've quite a uh, equivalent 
equivalence fuel system and a oxygen sensor. So let's just start it up. See how quickly there they go. Milliamp reading, open loop. Is it one? Just keep her eye on this island here. See, she's still even rough when she's in. She's set. There's sound a wee bit better. Oh, no, it's away again. Close, we're in closed loop. I crafted these things. Oh, that's just went into fault. Open route fault. So I did a wide open throttle uh, pull test there. And you can see, see when I'm accelerating, it's staying rich and this is on bank, this is on bank one sensor two. So it is riching itself up. But how come we've got that code coming back right away? I'll show you this. Staying up. So it can go, but it's been held back by the open loop fault. So based on that code, and the guy told me they've already replaced the O2 sensor. We're going to replace the O2 sensor again. But if you just look at this, here's the one that came out. But look at the length of the lead. So to me, that's just a, a universal O2 sensor. Uh, even adapted properly for this car, so. We're going to try. And we're waiting for this uh, new oxygen sensor to arrive. Roddy found this. You see it in there? Oh, that was actually just lying in there. The clips are broken. Now that's part of the secondary air injection system. It, it heats the car up quicker when it's cold. So it needs clips for there. But we tried the car, we started it, and it seems to be blocked off. That valve is shut, so I don't think that's the problem with our air at the moment. But that is a problem. I'll show you where that goes. So that's that's the secondary air pump just there, but you can see the mountains broken on the thing. So that's to heat up your catalytic converter quicker when it's colder, to make the sensor lean. And that is a problem of. We'll have a nasty leak there as well. But we shall go and we've took the O2 sensor out. Yeah, it goes up and just well, there's there's a the secondary one up the top. The other one's just in there. We're trying a little test here. We've got the, the O2 sensor in our hand. We're putting propane on it to see if we can get a reaction here. And we're not even reacting in the milliamp scale. We're still in open loop, which is good because the engine's cold. But you think you should get a reaction. And the other thing, this sensor isn't even getting warm through the heater circuit. We're definitely... I see it's is that moving again, really? Uh, the lambda's going. It's starting to move now. Get a get old flame. Uh, like that. Take it away. Look at that there. It says it's in closed loop, my man. 245 milliamps. And then it went down. So Roddy's got the flame on it. So it's going lean. Take it away, Roddy. And then it idles up. This is crazy stuff. We're back into lambda equivalents. So I hit it, hit it, take it away, my man. So Roddy took the flame away. And then it goes back up. It goes like garbage. 
We'll wait, we'll wait till the sensor cools down. This one from our supplier, and it looks exactly the same as that one that came off the car, so. Because uh, once you, sorry, once you open the packet of this, you cannot return it, so I would actually get, I'd rather get an OE one than go down this route, because this could be a disaster, so we'll just wait and get the proper. The gaps in these plugs are enormous, and there's an oil leak going into the plugs as well for the rocker cover gasket. So, we're getting a new set of plugs, and let's hope that cures the problem. Look at that one. Massive. So, that was the worst one. Four plugs required. Oh everybody, we finally have a result. So our equivalency ratio is one. We're in closed loop. Oh, that's perfect. Eight degrees. Our O2 sensor. Look, it's perfect. Uh, our short term fuel trims 2.34. And our air flow is 2.25, so I'll let you see what Roddy the man found. If somebody said Roddy the man, the man that does everything. So we've clamped in here at a hose. It comes off the intake manifold right underneath. And we're not sure of the route it yet, but just clamping that has improved it greatly. This hose goes up to this junction up here. So we need to find out, well that's simply the vacuum source and we need to find out what's upstream that can be causing our issues. But listen to that, beautiful. So it was always lean because it had a great big dirty vacuum leak. Right, well we'll go look at our old data chart, that'll be this. Therein, therein lies our problem, it's a T-piece. So see down, uh, if you just point it with your, uh, that, that plastic bit there. That's about there, it's fairly bits. So this insert goes in that way, and so this is where the leak is. My, my, my. The old data diagram was pretty good, because uh, there's a crankcase ventilation there, where my cursor is, and then it goes to this T-piece. And we originally blanked it there, coming out the the intake manifold, so the, the thing idled well, it's when it came to that TPC there. So we need to find out what that is from the main dealer. So we ordered a uh, new pipe work off the of Amazon. Uh, there's everything you get there. And we were wondering why our smoke test didn't work. Well, no wonder it didn't work. It's got a one-way valve. So we're pressurising this system, and this meant to be, well, it draws a vacuum through this one wave valve, so that's why the smoke test did not reveal the leak. The other thing we've got is the rocker cover gasket, but if you want a good video on how to do that, check out Dave Sterling's video. So we'll do that as well, and this car should all be good. And Roddy's just getting to the guts of this thing, so we're going in, oh, it's hard to see. We're going in there, take the pipe to there, a little clip. I think Roddy put that one. There's a little clip that comes out the hose, so we just use a set of long nose pliers to get into that oh, let's see, bottom bit there, and we're trying to take it as a winner so we can set it up. Finally, going sweet as a nut, but a couple of points to note here. Uh, these, that pipe had already been replaced, I think, and it must be of low manufacturing quality. So, I think that must be the issue. So I think the next time we do this job, we go right to VAG and get the right stuff because that's cost the customer money here. So we've replaced all these pipes. You have to retract this little bit and take the dipstick tube, tubing out and then you can get access into it. But it's a pester job, really, to put that new tubing in. Here's, here's the one that's split. That's the one-way valve, I think. So that's what's splitting this one, but as I say, 
Uh, it's no vag quality, so. So we'll look at the figures. I remember when, <laughs> when I actually looked at this at first, I said there was eight grams a second coming into that airflow, and I said, that's normal. Well, that's no normal because when you think about it, the grams a second should equal the capacity of the engine, so it should be about two grams a second, no eight. So we had elevated airflow, and uh, actually we'll go and measure the vacuum in this as well, because I'd done it off camera, and it was when it was really bad, it was only five grams of mercury. Should be 18. So let's go into this, see if we've got how we're looking. So read fault codes, generic. So there's no fault codes, that's good. But let's look at our live data. So select all. We'll see there. There you go. We were up at eight. Now we're down at three. Uh, quite happy. We're in closed loop. Five. Let's see if our oxygen sensors look good. It's actually taking fuel away. It's correcting from before. So let's see our, what's the, the figure again? Equivalence, oh, zero, one. Oh, that, that's good. We're at one, so we should hover about that. Let's graph it. We can hear it, it's sounding nice. See, it gives that odd blip. I wonder what that's all about. That's strange, isn't it? We need to let that come back in. Relearn its figures. Let's go and measure the vacuum and intake vacuum manifold. And intake manifold, so you can see that that's good. Just about 20 inches. That's a good vacuum, so we're quite confident that we've not got any leaks. And I just ported it right in there, right in where the the fuel vapors come in about. So that's just after the throttle plate, plate so it's getting fuel manifold vacuum. So as I said to you, when it was really bad. I was only getting five. I was doing here. Five inches of mercury. So now I'm at 20, so that's good. So that's uh, the rocker cover gasket done. So you can see we just went into the closed loop as soon as we hit 58 degrees. Uh, 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 lambda equivalently is one. Just hovering around about one. So it still does this dive down, but I don't know what that's all about. Oxygen current is good. Uh, it's taking away fuel trims, as I said to you before, it had learned it so long that it now has to take away. Uh, where's the long term? Uh, it's not there, no matter. But we're running good. Hallelujah. Have a nice day.